Okay, so today we have just a uh, quick video. This is a an Albrecht chuck that I picked up, and uh, as you can see, it has a uh, stub auger on it, stub uh, straight auger, and I have to get that out to put in a Morse two auger to use it on my lathe. Um, Albrechts are really really nice chucks. This this is a half inch model. Um, I believe they do make a five eighths. I'm not sure about the recorder. But this is in really good shape. It moves nice and smooth. All the teeth, a lot of times you'll see chips taken out of the edge of the teeth. Or a lot of times people over tighten them and then the chuck spins. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the drill spins inside the chuck. And you get rounded edges on the on the edges of the, of, the, uh, of the jaws here. These jaws are perfectly fine so I don't have to take this all apart to rebuild. Um, if you want to take this all apart to rebuild, this collar comes off here and then you have to grab this edge here in something some way and then turn this knurled section and unscrew it. This is a hood, it contains the bearings and the jaws and the uh, the, the slide and everything inside. There are instructions and everything online um, to rebuild these and they're pretty simple to follow. But we have to get this auger out now. There, there are a bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, you can get the Jacobs wedges, which are actually wedges that go in here and will force between the uh, the bottom of your chuck and the uh, whatever arbor is in there and pop it out. Now, a lot of times too, this arbor happens to be big enough to have a lip here. But sometimes, if you get some of the smaller ones, like say if this was a half inch. Um, you won't have this lip and you'll have nothing to push against so uh, what they recommend doing is taking and spot drilling a hole through the hole through the arbor now these are usually hardened but they're only case hardened so um, in other words, they're not hardened all the way through only the outside is so once you get get through the outside there it's easy drilling straight through and then press in a hardened dowel pin and then use that with the wedges to pop it out now I don't have the wedges. I'm going to use the poor man's wedge, which is my uh, uh, there it is. It's called a wrench, and um, this is how I got all the arbors off my drill chucks and everything off, off of my drill presses. And basically, this is uh, got a very very slight uh, wedge to it. In other words, it's thinner at the bottom than it is at the top. It fits that. Uh, that diameter inside there and as you can see it doesn't go all the way in so you should just be able to tap this wrench and it should be able to force this off now a lot of times even that even sometimes that isn't enough to get these off um, what you may have to do is if they're really really in there is take all this apart and then once you get this all apart you can't you can go from the inside and punch it out or use a hydraulic press and punch it out worst case scenario now don't try to go down the throat here thinking that the end of this arbor is up here it's not it ends right here um, and just a little quick word about these chucks is they are obviously a quick change chuck and um, they have their keyless so you just turn them give them a little twist and lock them in now what tight actually tightens them is torque so as you put more torque on these teeth it'll actually self tighten to a point um, this is a half inch chuck you only want to use up to half inch drills with these we use what is rated for them so if you have a half inch chuck you can go up to half inch shank if you have or a half inch drill rather if you have a, a, a 5 8 um, drill you can go up to 5 8 with them do not use silver and deming bits with these I, I, I know I've seen people use them, plenty of people have had, have way more experience than I do, probably do it all the time, but the problem with that is, is that not that they don't fit, I mean they fit beautiful in there, and look, now it's just quick tightening, and any torque on this will, will tighten the chuck, that's the problem. You have such a large drill and a lot of torque on this, that you can over tighten and spin these drills really easily. Um, and completely jam them. You, I, I've seen ones that have become almost to the point of not unusable because somebody used a um, reduced shank drill bit in them. Also, the other thing too, you want to be careful with your regular center drills when you put them in. 
try not to just drop them in and bury them all the way at the bottom. You want to put them in till they touch the bottom. Tighten them up a little bit and then just pull them out just a hair so that this tip isn't riding in the bottom. Because if it does tighten itself down, it's going to draw that in slightly. Now, the, that precaution and everything else is, is a bit overkill, but um, especially if you bought a new one of these, you paid a good you know $300 for a drill truck. You don't want to screw it up. So um, what we're going to do is just throw this arbor here into a chuck on my lathe so it's easier to to work on. We should be able to pop this right off. Okay, first things first is I'm going to take this collar off. Um, cause I, I don't, as I'm driving it in, I don't want to force it further into the chuck because it will slip on this a little bit. Um, and also, if you get one of these and it's a little tight, try loosening up this collar and just pulling it off a little bit. If it's jammed up super, super close to the edge here, that's what it'll be making you bind. Now, there's a tiny flathead, well, not tiny, but there's a flathead screw in there, and they're usually pretty tight, so make sure you have a, um, a flathead that fits it really, really nice. I like to use the ones that fit on a ratchet, give me a nice amount of torque so I can just push it in there and if we go the right direction here hold it tight and I should be able to just muscle it through and that's loose so we should be able to just take that split spread it a little bit and pop that collar right off Okay, I got that edge all cleaned up. I'm going to put this back in the chuck. And what we're going to do is line up the edge of that with the edge of the chuck jaw. And get it, tighten it down. And uh, I have a piece of wood here on the ways just in case I can't catch it. We should be able to take this and use her as a wedge and pop it right off. Let's see how we do. Yep, oh, look at that. There it is, right there. Now, you can see a little bit of galling right here on the arbor itself, on the Jacobs taper. You or I'm going to make sure that there is no galling on the inside of this or if there is I will make sure to file it down. It doesn't look like a whole lot, maybe one little little bit right in the corner. Also, um, each one of these is different or there, there you can have different uh, Jacobs tapers. It can be a, uh, this happens to be a J2, Jacobs taper 2, but there can also be uh, another common one especially for uh, consumer grade drill presses and stuff like that is going to be a um, JT33 and that is stamped on the body of the bottom of the chuck you can see right here it says J2 so that's the upper size so I'm going to clean up the inside there make sure there's no galling it doesn't like I said it doesn't look too bad let me see if I can get the light in here a little bit better You can see that line where that galling was right there. There's a little, little bit of a ridge. I'll make sure that that's all smoothed out or as smooth as I can get it. And we'll show you a nice way to get that, um, the new arbor and taper in that. Okay, we got it all cleaned out and thoroughly degreased. Um, I smoothed that out as much as I can. It basically has, that's not a burr, that looked like a, kind of like a divot, like a piece of metal was pulled off of it. It could be possibly that that taper had spun in the socket at one point, but we should have good contact all the way around. So right now I gotta go get the arbor, but here's the trick. Uh, that, we need a good old brass hammer. And then we need to go over here. <laughs> Next to the Klondike bars. Put my taper in the freezer for, it's been in there probably about 
three hours. To kind of shrink it as much as you can. If you really want to go crazy, you can also take that and throw it in the oven for a little bit at, you know, uh, probably 200 degrees or so. Make sure everything's nice. Let me pop it right in there. And give her a good tap. And now, that sucker's in there. And as it heats up and expands, it ain't going anywhere. And then all you need to do is take your collar Give her a couple of taps here And get it seated right there A little bit too much on one side Spin good and take our screwdriver here and tight. Tighten it down. Now we'll just make sure it fits in the tailstock and we should be good to go. Okay, so now you got to keep in mind also that on the 9 inch lathes there is no tang in the tailstock here. Um, so you'll lose about a half inch travel. If you really want to, you can grind the, uh, the tang off of whatever arbor you're using. Um, and so, I'll take that. And we're in. That sucker is not going anywhere. Now you can see right here, that's the amount of movement in the tail stuck that you lose right there because of that tang. And there's your eject. And then you can check your wear marks here. Make sure you're grabbing them. You can see I'm kind of, I'm hitting here and hitting here. Now this tail stock is a perfect, it does have wear in it. If you have a brand new one, it should be nice and over everything or even if you have one that has a um, is a little bit off you can always run a uh, a, a uh, morse tape or reamer down it if you need to but this one holds perfectly fine I, gra it, I do know that it grabs more in the front here than it does in the back but it uh, it does not spin inside you can see right here as the wear marks it grabs a little bit more here than it does over in the very very back Okay, so now, um, now that I have that Albrecht chuck, um, I do have a surplus drill chuck. I have a, a, the Albrecht chuck, a, uh, a newer um, Jacobs chuck, and I have an older um, Jacobs chuck that I got when I bought the lathe. So what I'm going to do, I, I, I uh, actually looked around the shop a little bit here and uh, through my toolbox and I found a couple of things that I have doubles of now what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna donate them to Keith Fenner uh, in the toolbox giveaway now I can't uh, give anything really big within the way of um, measuring tools and micromas and, and dial indicators and that sort of thing because of all the ones that I use, I have, I pretty much need and use. So, um, or what, what, what few ones that I have, um, I do have a need for. So, but what, what I do have that I don't really need anymore, or that I don't see myself having a need for, is I have a um, a brand new dead center. This is not the one that I usually use. The one I use is a carbide tipped, so I keep that one in. This one is just plain. Um, carbon steel 
uh, brand new. Brand new, still in the package. Uh, some Morse taper too. And um, so that's going off to Keith. I also have that um, Morse taper 3 dead center that I use in the headstock. Um, I have the South Bend one that has the reducing sleeve that gives me an extra uh, half inch of, um, of of length out of the spindle there, so I don't really have a need for this one. So that's going off to him too. Um, I also have found in one of the um, in in the with some of the tools that I inherited from um, one of my girlfriend's family members it's um, machining calculator can for uh, inserts and it'll tell you your speeds and feeds depth of cut your horsepower based on material and how much you want to remove and um, I don't really have a use for this I don't use any kind of inserts or anything like that so um, that'll be going off to him too and also um, especially for somebody who's first starting out not like I'm that far ahead but um, one of the things that really, really, really helped me out um, when I knew nothing about anything, and um, some people will still say I know nothing about anything, but um, one of the things that really, really helped me out was this book here, uh, South Bend's How to Run a Lathe. Now, obviously, Machinery Handbook has everything you need to know in it, but it's about that thick, and especially if you're first starting out and you don't know what you need to know. <laughs> So, and you don't know how to find it in that book. So this is kind of a condensed version of a lot of things that are very, very useful. Um, from tool bit grinding and kind of how different setups, how collets work, tailstock offsets, different formulas and stuff for different threads, and um, all, all, all things along, along those lines. It's kind of a very condensed version. I mean, you're looking at maybe 100 and, 126 pages. Um, of information that a a rank beginner is is going to need to know. Um, I mean, you got drill bit sharpening, all, all different kinds of things in here. So that's that's going into the box there too, and also um, this drill chuck here. Uh, it's it's old. Um, it, it's it's not brand new, but hell, it works. And if you don't have one. Um, you know, it'll it'll get you started. It's what what I started off with, so um, that's gonna go in there too. And then also, what I think I'm gonna do is take a um, a few blanks and just grind them into the commonly used tools of uh, right hand, uh, probably a right hand, a left hand, and a threading tool. Um, that that's also one of the, especially for somebody starting out. That's something that um, is very hard to learn. Is offhand tool grinding, and it's a it, even in, even though how good this book is when you read through it, it is a little intimidating when they're talking about 20 different angles. Um, and just just to have a um, you know a reference or something to look at and kind of go by, um, I think that'll help somebody out a lot. Plus, I mean, it, if they have a lathe, and well, the first day you get a lathe, at least uh, you know you can pop a tooling uh, a tool bit in there and turn it on and have at it and start making some chips. So. Um, those things will be uh, heading off down the Cape, um, and I hope they, they find a good home. Um, so that's, that's about it for now, so I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, see you on the next one.